the PC America Reseller Training Series. My name is Adam Moore and I am the sales engineer that will be conducting today's training. Today we're going to be discussing how to manage your inventory. Let's get started. When you first click on the software, this brings you into your login screen. On your login screen, you have Manager, Help, and Exit on your top right. Manager allows you to make any kind of back office changes or any adjustments that need to be made in the software. Help stores all of our FAQ knowledge, so if you're struggling with any aspect of the software, you can refer to our help menu. Exit allows you to exit out of our software. We are now going to click on Manager. When you click on Manager, you're prompted for username and password. The password is admin, A-D-M-I-N, and the ID is 01. So let's type that in now. A-D-M-I-N, enter then 01 at the bottom. Let's hit OK. We're now going to click on number 5 administrative, letter B, department maintenance. This will be the screen that you add all of your departments into the system. At the top of the screen you have category for this department which is meant for more detailed reporting. Department ID allows you up to 8 characters. So you can set this as any unique identifier or any alphanumeric that you want. Keep in mind, it must be under 8 characters. Department Description. This will display on your touchscreen or your invoice screen. So make sure when entering your department description, you have this the way you want it to appear. At the bottom of the screen, we have Previous and Next. Previous and Next is the slowest way of looking through your departments. Lookup is your most fastest and efficient way of looking up all of your departments. Let's hit look up now. When we hit look up, this shows you all the departments that we currently have in department maintenance. Let's now hit cancel and add a new department into the system. So we're going to hit cancel and now we're going to hit add department at the bottom of the screen. We're now going to call this department drinks. As you can see, I've duplicated my department description as my department ID because it's under 8 characters. So now I'm going to hit save. Your department has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say no. We're now going to hit save changes one more time. And now go into inventory maintenance and put an item into this department. So now we're going to hit exit. And now hit number 5 administrative letter A inventory maintenance now this is your inventory maintenance screen this is the screen where you're going to be entering all of your products into the system keep in mind we do have two alternate methods of adding your items into the system through an import that is called an ASCII import or a menu creation on the retail side it's called an ASCII import and on the restaurant side it's called a menu creation that is another service that we do offer so if you're interested in purchasing one you can contact your account manager. At the top of the screen, this is the general information that is required for a product. The middle section is the optional information that you can enable on a product. The bottom section is how we navigate and how we add our items into the system. Previous and next is the slowest ways of navigating through all of your items in inventory. Lookup is your most fastest and efficient way of looking up your items. You have the ability to sort through categories department, or vendors. Now let's add an item into the system, into the department that we just created called drinks. We're now going to hit add item. When you hit add item, you have five types of items that you can create into the system. You have your standard item, which is your regular or standard inventory, coupon, which allows you to create a coupon in the system for a dollar amount or percentage, choice item, which allows you to create a button and then have categories underneath that button. A good example, let's say you have chips, and then once you hit chips, you have all your different types of chips that you offer, such as Doritos, Lay's, and so on. Kit can be used to bundle inventory items together, or on the restaurant side, this can be used as a combo meal, such as a burger, fries, and a drink. Modifier group, this is used for a product prompt. A good example would be a steak. When you select a steak, you want to be prompted how the customer would like that steak cooked. 
you would use a modifier group in order to do that. So now let's just click on standard item because we're just adding a regular standard inventory item into the system. And we're going to select our department now, call drinks. And now we're going to scan the barcode of our Snapple. So I scan the barcode of my Snapple and now I'm going to enter the description of the Snapple. I'm now going to enter the cost is what I pay for the product. So let's say for the Snapple I pay a dollar. The price we charge is going to be two dollars. If you are tracking your tax, the price of tax will automatically calculate. As you can see, it did $2.14 with tax. We could also enter the number in stock. So let's say the number in stock we have is 100. We're now going to hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another item? We're going to say no for now, just to backtrack on what we just did. So we're going to hit save one more time to make sure our changes have committed. And now just go over what we did. So we select the department for this item as drinks. We scan the barcode of that product. You must first click in the field, then scan the product. We then enter the full description of our item. We then enter the cost of what we pay for the product versus what we charge the customer. And as long as you're tracking your tax in the software, it'll automatically calculate the price for tax. Now the number in stock can be adjusted two ways. This can be adjusted by instant PO or by ordering your products through vendors and purchase orders. In the middle of the screen here, we have a couple tabs. We have optional info, which is all of these options that we have here that we can enable on the product. And then we have ordering info. Now under ordering info, a couple neat features here. We have reorder level, reorder quantity. If you utilize the software, if you utilize the software the way it should be, this can make life very easy when ordering more of your products. This is the field where you would come to associate the vendor with the product. With the reorder level, you can set this once it reaches a certain level to reorder more of that product if you set the reorder quantity. This will automatically be thrown into a report called your reorder report. Special pricing. Special pricing allows you to do sales pricing by discount or percentage. Bulk pricing is used for two for one or buy one get one. Time based pricing can be used for any promotions that you have going on for a certain time of the day or maybe you offer a happy hour on your establishment. Matrix. We offer a two-dimensional matrix into the system which allows us to add any kind of clothing, hats, shirts, pants into the system by size and color. A little later on we're going to cover how that matrix works. Sales history. As long as the item has been sold there will be sales history based on that product. Recipe. Recipe can be used to link your inventory together. A good example would be Let's say you have a carton of cigarettes versus a single pack of cigarettes. Now you would want that single pack of cigarettes to be deducted from the carton of pack of cigarettes. You would use a recipe in order to do that. Printers. Very important, especially on the restaurant side. When you have your, well, you want to make sure that you have your printers installed before adding all your items into the system. This way you can associate the printer with the item right there and then as you're adding it in. Price levels. Now we have over 26 different price levels that we offer in the system. Good example, let's say maybe you have children uh, that are shopping there and you can mark them with a discount. So let's say you want to give all children that shop at your establishment 25% off. We'll hit enable and you'll notice that it changes the price of that item to $1.50. Let's also say you want to do the same for senior citizens. <clears throat> Let's go to price level S. Let's also mark this for 25%. We're now going to hit enable. As you can see, it adjusted my price. And now moving forward, anybody that I have set with price level S or C 
will get this product at 25% discounted. To show you how these price levels quickly work, I'm just going to exit out of here. I'm going to hit yes to the changes that I just made and show you how to correlate these price levels with the customer. So when you go to customer maintenance, and I got there by going into administrator number five, letter E, customer maintenance, and right here in the middle section, we have price level. As I mentioned, you have over 26 different price levels that you can set. So for anybody that's marked as a senior citizen, moving forward, they will get all their products marked at that price level. To exit out of there, go back into inventory maintenance. Again, administrator number five, letter A, inventory maintenance. Modifiers, as I mentioned, this is used for a product prompt. A good example, let's say you have a steak and when you hit that steak, you want to be prompted how that steak should be cooked. Or let's say you're selling coffee and you can charge by the size. So you can create a small, medium and large and then charge by the size accordingly. You would use modifiers in order to do that. A little later on, we're going to cover how to do some modifiers. Notes. Notes is any special note that you want to put on this product. Maybe it's made with a high allergy content, or maybe it's made with peanuts. Any kind of note that you want to enter in there, you can do so. So now what I want to do is I want to add an item into the system. So we're going to hit add item at the bottom of the screen. We're now going to hit standard item. We're now going to select our department that we just created called drinks. We're now going to create the item called coffee. Now this is going to be an item that's not barcoded. So we're just going to type in the item number. So we're going to say coffee. And also make the description coffee as well. Now let's say for the cup of coffee, it costs us maybe 50 cents to make the cup of coffee. But we're charging a dollar fifty. Price of tax will automatically calculate. And since it's a cup of coffee, we don't actually have to track that because you really don't track the liquid, although you can if you wanted to, but I'm just going to uncheck count this item to show you how to create an item very easily. So now let's hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another item? We're going to say no for now. Now let's hit save changes one more time to make sure our changes commit and now exit out of the software to show what we just did. So now we're going to exit out, exit out of here, and now log into the software. When you log into the software, your default ID is 01, and the password is admin, A-D-M-I-N, enter. We're now going to hit our TS lookup button. This is your touchscreen lookup button. We're now going to look for our department that we just created, which is called drinks. So we're going to scroll down, and there it is, drinks. So under drinks, we have our two products, Snapple iced tea and coffee. Let's click on these two items to show you how they'll ring up. So it rings up just like that. Now with a cup of coffee, usually you're prompted on how, what size you would like for that coffee. And we're also going to exit out of our manager screen and now log into our invoice screen. Again, our default ID and password is 01, enter, and our password is admin, A-D-M-I-N, enter. Now this is our invoice screen. We're now going to click on TS Lookup. We're now going to hit our drop down arrow so we can sort through our different departments. There's a department that we just created called drinks. Now we just added two types of items to the system. We entered a barcoded item 
and a non-barcoded item. Let's see how these two items ring up. So we're now just going to click on it, or we can scan the product. So let, since this coffee item is non-barcoded, we're going to have to click on it. And that's how it's going to come up. But usually when you ring up a cup of coffee, you want to be prompted for the different sizes so you can charge accordingly. And that is done through modifiers. A little later on, we're going to cover how to do that. But now let's ring up our Snapple product. We're now going to click, it, click on our Snapple iced tea. And there you go. So this time when this item rings up, it shows you the item number that's associated with the item with the price and the full description. And here it shows you that we set the item number as the description of the product. And you can do that. You know, the description can be the description and item number can be whatever you want it to be. It can even be a number if you wanted it. So that's fine as well. Now let's say we want to apply a modifier group to this coffee so we could prompt for the different sizes. Let's get out of here. We're going to go back into inventory maintenance to do that. So we'll have to create a modifier group called sizes. So we're going to go into options, number five, administrative, letter A, inventory maintenance. We're now going to hit add item. We're now going to hit modifier group because now we're going to create the different sizes for our coffee. So let's hit modifier group. And for our modifier group, we're going to put this in our none department. Because this is back-end work. You really don't want to show this back-end work. When you hit your coffee button, you just want to work together. So we're going to save this in our None department so we can later on hide this department. So I'll hit None. And here, I'm going to call this Coffee Sizes. And for the prompt, we're going to say, what size cup would you like? We're now going to hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say yes to that. Now we're going to select standard item because now we're going to create all of our individual modifiers for our different cup sizes. So we're going to hit standard item. And now we're going to keep the department the same because again, this is back end work and you don't want to show this information. So we're just going to save this in our none department. And for the cup size, I'm going to call this one small. And let's say for the small, we pay maybe 85 cents to make the cup. And we're going to be charging a dollar. Oops, sorry. It's $85. And we're going to make the price we charge a dollar. And we're also going to enable tax one, so it shows you the price of tax is $1.07. And we're going to mark this item, modifier item. We're now going to create medium. So let's hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say yes. And again, standard item. Now we're going to create. Now we're going to create medium. And for the medium cup, we're going to charge a dollar fifty. The cost for this cup, let's say it's going to cost us maybe 95 cents price of tax will automatically calculate and we're now we're going to hit save and mark the item as a modifier item and make sure our tax one is enabled because we are charging for the size so now let's hit save your item has been added would you like to add another we'll say yes and we're going to do large And for the large, let's say we charge $2 for that. And to make this cup, it costs us a dollar. Now you'll notice, every time I enter my cost and the price we charge, at the bottom of the screen, our profit and gross margin is calculated. Just want to give you a heads up on that. So now that we've created our individual modifiers, let's also mark this one as a modifier item. Make sure our tax one is enabled and hit save. So now we can go back and add our individual modifiers into our group now. So let's hit look up, 
modifier groups, coffee sizes. We're now going to double click on that. And now we can hit add modifier. Now these are the three modifiers that we just added into the system. So that's why they, that's all that appears in here. So small, medium, and large. Now, as you can see, the text on this one is different than the other. I can actually go back and change that. So let's do that now. I'm going to hit save, hit look up, and let's look up small. There it is. I'm now going to double click on it and add this to my description, cup. So now it matches all the other sizes. Again, we're just going to hit save. And now we can go back into lookup, back into our modifier groups, double click on coffee sizes, which is our modifier group. Okay, and as you can see, it has now been updated. Small cup, medium cup, large cup. So now what we want to do is take this and attach this to the item coffee. So we're going to hit save. And we're going to hit look up. And now we're going to look up our cup of coffee. There it is. We're now going to double click on the product. But now that we're charging for the size, we can leave the price at zero. And now we could apply the modifier. Now we could apply the modifier to this item and it'll show you how it's going to work all together. So instead of being charged, so instead of hitting coffee and then being charged, it'll now come up with the prompts, you know, small, medium, and large, and then charge you accordingly. So now we're going to hit modifiers, add modifier group, coffee sizes. We're going to select that. Would you like to charge for items in this group? Yes. We're also going to make sure it's forced because we want to make sure they pick a size. So we're charging for modifiers and the modifier is forced. So now let's hit save. And let's backtrack on what we just did. So we created our individual modifiers. So we created small. If we type in cup, it'll pull up all the ones that we've added in so far. So there we go. So these are our individual modifiers that we added in so far. We have small cup, medium cup, and large cup. Then we created the modifier group, which is called coffee sizes. After we created each individual modifier, we then attach the individual modifiers into the coffee size. We then apply the coffee size to the actual coffee item. So now let's take a look at our coffee item and see how it rings up. Let's exit out of here. We're going to exit out of here, which is your manager screen. Delete these two items. Exit out so the screen can refresh. Now let's log back in. Zero one, enter. And our password is admin, A-D-M-I-N. Enter. We're now going to hit TS Lookup. Now, just to show you what I mean, that you don't want to show that back end work, our department is currently hidden, our non department, but later on, I'll show you, you know, how that would look, you know, if we were to show that information. So now when we go to drinks, we can hit our coffee button. And now when we hit our coffee button, we're going to get a prompt. There you go. What size cup would you like? Now you can select it accordingly, large cup, medium cup, or small cup. And there you go. That's how it's going to come up. So you can now charge accordingly by size. And that's how modifiers group work. So let's delete this item and ring it up again. Now select medium cup. As you can see, the price increases for each size. One last time, large cup, $2. As you can see, the price does increase. And it also shows you the, the tax that is being charged as well. So now that we've just covered how modifiers work, the next thing I want to show you is how recipes work. In order to set up our recipes, we're going to exit out of here. So we're going to hit done, hit options, number five, administrative, letter A, inventory maintenance. Now let's navigate to our tobacco department where I have two items created for the recipe feature. We're now going to click on look up on your lower left, which is your most fastest and efficient way of looking up your items in inventory. We'll now hit our drop down arrow and select tobacco. 
In tobacco department, you'll see that I have created Marble Carton and Marble Single Pack. Now every time we sell a single pack, we want the single pack to be deducted from the carton of cigarettes. Let's take a look at our single pack now and show you how that is set up. As you can see, our number in stock for the single pack is set to zero. We also have count this item unchecked, meaning they were not tracking this item in inventory. This means every time that we sell a single pack, we want this being pulled from the carton of cigarettes. Now let's take a look at our carton of cigarettes that we're going to be pulling our single pack of cigarettes from. Let's click on look up. We're now going to hit the drop down under department. Select tobacco. We're now going to select our marble carton. As you can see here, the number in stock is set to four, meaning that we have 40 individual packs of cigarettes. You also notice at the bottom of the screen here, we also have count this item checked, meaning that we're tracking this item in inventory. So now what we want to do is we want to apply the cart of cigarettes to our single pack of cigarettes, because every time we sell that single pack, we want it being pulled from this inventory here. So let's click on look up, hit the drop down arrow, select tobacco, back to our marble single pack. We're now going to hit recipe tab, and now we're going to hit add ingredient. We're now going to apply the cart of cigarettes to the single pack. Add ingredient. We're now going to hit the drop down arrow one more time. Select tobacco. And like I said, we're going to apply the cart of cigarettes to the single pack. Double click on marble carton. This will then ask you to enter the quantity. This means the pack that is going to be deducted from that inventory. To figure out that calculation, there are 10 packs in a carton. So what I did was I did 1 divided by 10, which gives you 0.1. So every time I sell a pack of cigarettes from the carton, it's going to deduct a 0.1 from that whole number. So 0.1, hit OK. Yield percentage is anything that goes to waste. When selling cigarettes, and by the pack, nothing is going to waste. So we're going to leave that at zero. We're now going to hit save. Now what we want to do is ring up this pack of cigarettes and show you how that deduction is made in inventory. So let's hit save. Let's exit out of here. Let's exit out of our manager screen. Now we're going to go into TS Lookup. We're now going to select our tobacco department and select our marble single pack. Now when I sell a marble single pack, this should bring our inventory down to 3.9, meaning that we still have three full cartons, but now we're down to nine individual packs of cigarettes. So let's sell this marble single pack here. We're now going to hit pay, and we'll just select cash as our payment method. Now let's navigate to our inventory, so we're just going to hit done here. Click on options, back into number 5 administrative, letter A, inventory maintenance. We now want to navigate to our tobacco department, so we're going to hit look up, hit the drop down for department, select tobacco. We're now going to take a look at our carton of cigarettes. And as you can see, it's already set to 3.9, meaning that we still have three full cartons, and now we have nine individual packs of cigarettes. And there you go. And that is how recipe works. So now that we've gone over on how recipes work, I now want to show you how the Styles Matrix works. Because this can be very beneficial, especially when adding any kind of clothing into the system. It can save you a lot of time when using the Matrix. So we're going to hit save now. Before we do that, we want to create a department for our, our clothing. So we're going to hit save, and we're going to exit out of here. And now we're going to go into administrative, letter B, department maintenance, which is right next door to inventory maintenance. So letter B, department maintenance. And we're going to, call it, we're going to create a department called T-shirt. So add department. I'm going to call this T-shirt. And again, your department ID is limited to eight characters, so you can really make that whatever you want. I'm just giving this a short little abbreviation and pulling the full description of how I want it to appear on my screen. So T-shirt. So I'm now going to hit save. Your department has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say no for now. So now let's exit out of here and create a styles matrix. So now we're going to exit. And now we're going to hit number five administrative. Letter D, Styles Matrix. We're now going to hit Add Style. Enter style name. Let's call this Custom T. 
Now I'm going to hit enter. And now select our department that we just created for that item. T-shirt. Let's say the cost to make the shirt is $10. The price we charge is going to be $25. We're also going to charge tax one on that item. Keep in mind, if this option is unchecked auto generate numbers, it will prompt you to create uh, the item number for each style that you create, each style and each color and each size. So as long as you have this checked, it will automatically create these in the system for you. So now let's hit save. If we wanted to order more of this product, we can select our vendors if we had a vendor added for this item and set that here so we can order more so in the on order matrix. A little later on, I'll show you how the vendors work and how we can order more of these products. So now what I want to do is I want to add some sizes and colors into the system. So we're going to hit Save Changes one more time, just to make sure our changes take effect. Now we're going to hit the In Stock Matrix. We're now going to start adding our different sizes and our different colors. So first, let's add our couple sizes in. So we'll do Small. We'll do medium, we'll do large, and we'll do an XL. Now let's add our colors for our different sizes. So we're going to hit add color, and let's say red. Next color, let's say blue. Add color, let's say green, enter, add color, and let's say black. Now we'll hit enter one last time. All right, so now we've entered, we have entered all our different colors and all our different sizes. So now we can hit save changes. And now we can set how many we have of each item. Again, if we had our vendor set up, then we'll be able to order more of these products. But until we have that set up, we cannot order these products because they must be associated with the item first. So what I'm going to do now is say how many I have of each color and each size. So just to show you how this, work, how this works, I'm going to put one in each field. And all I'm doing is double clicking into the field. And it's popping for the reason why I'm adjusting my inventory because I'm receiving the inventory. I have one of each. All right. Any reason you would be deducting, you can change this description for either damage or removal out of inventory. Okay, almost done here. All right, just a couple more. And the last one. So now we just added one of each size and one of each color. So now let's take a look at our inventory maintenance and see how that looks. So now we're just going to exit out of here. We're now going to hit number five, administrative, letter A, inventory maintenance. We're now going to hit lookup. We're now going to select our t-shirt department that we just created. There it is, t-shirt. So as you can see, it automatically created each color and each size into the system automatically so I didn't have to go back and create each individual shirt and each individual color okay so this way when using the matrix it makes life just a lot more easier when adding any kind of clothing you know shoes hats or anything like that that requires a size and color into the system let's also exit out of here and show you how it looks on our invoice screen exit out exit out of our manager screen I'm gonna exit out of our Invoice screen so it can refresh. Log back in with zero 01, enter. 
Again, our password is admin, A-D-M-I-N. Now, it is recommended to change this password once you become familiar with the software. In order to change the password, I'll show you that very quickly. We're just going to hit File here, and then Change Password. So when you hit Change Password, all you're going to have to do is type in admin as your old password, create your new password, and confirm your new password. That is all. So now let's continue to log into the software. So we're just going to hit enter because we already typed in our password. And now let's hit TS Lookup. And now we're going to look up our t-shirt department. And there you go. It shows you all the different t-shirts that we just added into the system. Very simple of how that works. And that is how the Styles Matrix works. So now let's say we wanted to order more of these products. We'd have to make sure that these items are associated with vendors. In order to do that, we must create vendors in the system. So let's hit Done. We're going to hit Options, letter A, Vendor Maintenance. So this is where we can come to create all of our different vendors in the system. When you hit this drop-down arrow, this shows you all the different vendors you already have added. So now we want to create a vendor so we can add more t-shirts, we want to add maybe more uh, snapples, you know, things like that. So let's create a vendor now and show you how that's going to work and how to associate that vendor with an item in inventory. Now keep in mind, if the item is not associated with the vendor in inventory, then you cannot order more of that product through our software. So as I mentioned, the drop down arrow shows everything we have added so far. So let's do add now. And for the vendor number, you know, I recommend using their phone number, but again, you could also type in their phone number at the bottom here. But I just believe it's a little bit easier to find them if, you, if you're searching. But, you know, it's on you. Um, I'd like to use their phone number as their vendor number. So we'll say 845-920-0800. Oh, already in use. For the company name, we're going to say Adam's Drinks. And we're now going to hit save. We're also going to select our method for this vendor. For the vendor, I want to, I want to be prompted to print. So let's hit save. Your vendor has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say no for now. So now let's backtrack our steps on what we just did. So we're just going to hit save changes one more time. And we're going to select our vendor that we just created, which is Adam's Drinks. All we did was we added a vendor number and a company name and set the method. That's all we did. We do recommend you enter as much information as you possibly can on your vendor, because the more information you have, the better it is for you. So now that we created the vendor, let's now associate this vendor with an item in inventory. So again, save changes. We're going to exit out of here. Now we're going to hit number five, administrative again letter A, inventory maintenance. And now let's look up our Snapple. So we'll hit look up. And now we can either scan our product or type in the first couple letters. So let's just scan it. Pulls it up right away. So now we can double click on the product and it pulls it up in our inventory maintenance screen. So for our ordering info, this is where we come to associate the item with the vendor. Now there are two ways, as I mentioned, to to, to adjust your number in stock, that is either through Instant PO for items that are not associated with vendors and to order your items through vendors and purchase orders. But in order to do that, as I said, you must make sure that the item is associated with the vendor. So we're going to hit Ordering Info Now and add pricing from a vendor. Add pricing from a vendor. Now, as you have all, after you have all your vendors added into the system, they will populate in the screen. I highly recommend adding all your vendors into the system first and then your inventory items. This way, you can associate your vendors right there and then as you're adding the items into the system. So we're now going to select Adam's Drinks. Part number is usually supplied to you from the vendor themselves. But we're just going to type in anything here so we can just show you how it works. So now we're going to hit Enter and now hit Save. Now, as you can see, there's room to add more vendors here. The reason is because you have the ability to add more than one vendor. Reason being, let's say one vendor is out of stock, or maybe one vendor has a better price. This is why you can have more than one vendor associated with the item in inventory. So now let's hit save. 
Now that we have this item associated with the vendor, we can now order more of this product. To order more of this product, that is done in our purchase order screen. So now let's hit save. And now exit out of our inventory maintenance screen. Number five, administrative. Letter H, purchase orders. Now this is your purchase order screen. On the top right, we're going to hit add. When you hit add, you have two types of orders that you can create, either a standard purchase order or return to vendor. Return to vendor would be something that's either damaged or maybe received the wrong product. So let's click on standard purchase order. We're now going to select our vendor that we just created, which is Adam's Drinks. Once you have the vendor selected, you can then hit add items and it'll show you the items that are associated with this vendor. So let's hit add items. And as you can see, we only have the one Snapple product. So we can either scan the product and it'll add it to the bottom of the screen, meaning that it's ready to be ordered, or we can double click on the product and it'll also put it at the bottom of the screen, which also means it'll be ready to be ordered. So let's just double click on the product, add it to the bottom. So now if we want to order more of this product, we're just going to double click in the quantity ordered field. Double click. There it is. So now that, we, now that we know how to order more, we're going to type in 100 here because we know, let's say it's going to be a very busy weekend. So we'll order another 100 so we have 200 in stock. So we'll hit OK to that. And now we can hit Save. Now as I mentioned, for this vendor, we have it prompting us to print. So when I hit Save, it should prompt me to print this purchase order. There you go. Would you like to print a copy of this PO? We're going to say no for now because we do not have a printer attached. So we'll hit no. And now it shows you the vendor, uh, the, the purchase order with an open status with the letter O. So you know that the status is open. So now let's say a day's gone by, you already sent your you already sent your order out, and now the day's gone by, and now your item has come has come. To receive that product, we're gonna just double click on the vent on, on the purchase order. We're now going to click on the actual item and now we're gonna hit receive at the bottom of the screen enter line number to receive it's line number one so we're gonna hit OK to that enter quantity received we just received a hundred so we're gonna hit OK to that as well we're now gonna hit update your changes have been saved hit OK to that this means that I have now received my inventory into the system. So now we can double click on the purchase order and now close it out. Closed purchase orders may not be reopened. Are you sure you would like to close this purchase order? Yes, we are. So now we can exit out and our Snapple product should be up to 200 in stock now. So let's exit out. Hit number five, administrative. Letter A, inventory maintenance. We're now going to hit lookup. Now let's scan our product. Pulls it up, and as you can see, our number in stock is now adjusted to 200. Now, to deduct from this inventory, you know, for items that are not associated with vendors, you can use the instant PO button. So let's say I want to bring this down to 100. I get an instant PO. It's going to prompt me for a reason of why I'm adjusting my inventory. So let's say maybe out of the 100 that maybe out of the 100 the 100 that we received a hundred of them were damaged or maybe 50 of them were damaged so we're going to type in damaged this way the software knows why we're adjusting this, the the, the uh, inventory in stock let's hit enter to that and let's say minus 50 hit ok to that you'll notice that our number in stock is now down to 150 again if you want to add to this it'll still prompt you for the description so we let's say we received 50 of this product, so hit received inventory, leave that the way it is, hit OK to that, enter number received, we'll say 50, and this will bring our stock back up to 100. And that is how you would order your products using vendors and purchase orders or adjusting your stock levels by the instant PO. So let's order one more product. So let's hit save on this, and let's go order more of our t shirts if we needed to. So let's exit out of here. Let's add a new vendor into the system. So we'll go to administrative, letter G, vendor maintenance. 
and we're going to add a new vendor into the system now. Let's call this T-Shirt Kings. PO delivery method will be set to print. And now we're going to hit save. Your vendor has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say no for now. And now we can add this vendor to our T-Shirts. So let's hit save changes. Exit out of here. And now we can go into our styles matrix and apply the vendor to the item this way. Now this is the easiest way to apply the vendor to all of your items. So let's hit vendor, the drop down arrow, and select t-shirt kings. And hit save changes. So now if we exit out of here, we're going to hit number five in administrative, inventory maintenance, and now go to lookup. Look up our t-shirt department. So let's say t-shirt department, or we can look it up by our t-shirt kings, which is our vendor that we just added in here. So let's go to our t-shirt. And these are all of our different t-shirts that we have added into the system. So now we can add all, I mean, now we can add the vendors to all of our different t-shirts now. So let's hit add pricing from a vendor and associate t-shirt kings with the item. And again, the vendor number is usually supplied to you from the vendor themselves. So we can put whatever number in there for now just to show you how it works. All right, and hit save. Now we can move on to the next shirt, which is green, ordering info, add pricing from a vendor, t-shirt kings. And now hit save. So we associated two items, the blue shirt, large, and the green shirt large. So now let's hit save and order more of these products. So let's hit exit. We're now gonna hit number five administrative, letter H, purchase orders. Add on your top right, standard purchase order. We can now select t-shirt kings and now hit add items. And it shows you the two items that we associated with that vendor. Again, the vendor must be associated with the item if you need to order more of that product. And to order more of these, all we would have to do is just hit double click, double click, adds both of them to the bottom of the screen. We can now hit quantity ordered. Let's say we want to order another 100 of these shirts. Hit OK. And now hit save. Again, for this vendor, we have it set to prompt us to print. So when we hit save, it should prompt us again. Would you like to print a copy of this PO? We're going to say no because we do not have a printer selected or, or, or I'm sorry, uh, connected. So now it shows you the purchase order has a status of open. So let's say a day's gone by and now we received our product. So let's double click on the purchase order and now receive these products. Again, it shows that we currently have one of each in stock right now. So this will bring it up to one on one for each item. So receive item, enter line number to receive, hit OK, 1, enter quantity receive, 100, hit OK again, and now we're going to hit receive item, line 2, hit OK, enter quantity received, 100, hit OK again, and now hit update. Your changes have been saved, which means we have now received our items in inventory. So hit OK, and now that we know we received these items, we can now double click on the purchase order and close it out. Closed purchase orders may not be reopened. Are you sure you would like to close this purchase order? Yes, we are. So now we're going to go to our inventory and look up these two products. So let's exit out of here. Again, number five administrative, letter A, inventory maintenance. We're now going to go into our department t-shirts. Sh and there we go. It shows us for our blue and our green, we're at 101, while all the other items are still at one in stock. And that is how your purchase orders work. Now that we've ordered some more products, added non-barcoded items and barcoded items, vendors and modified our products, the next thing I want to show you is our reporting screen. So now we're going to hit cancel, exit out of our inventory maintenance screen, administrative letter number five, letter L, reporting. 
Now this is our reporting screen. Now we have over 75 reports in this screen and they are both specific to the restaurant and retail side. As you can see, our reports are based on these categories, sales, inventory, customer, employee, restaurant, and rental. <coughs> now I want to cover a couple of reports that can be very beneficial to you, especially when managing your inventory. We're going to click on the inventory category. So as you can see, once you have all of your items added to the system, the best report to see all of your items and departments is either list alphabetical or list numerically. So let's hit display and this report will generate. This will show you all of the departments that we have added into the system along with all the products that we've entered into the system as well. The last page will show you the grand total or the total inventory value that you have in the system. You also have the ability to export this report out of the system if need be. When you hit the export button on your top left, you have multiple extensions that you can export to. next report I'm going to go on to is going to be your reorder report. As I mentioned, if you're using the software the way you should be and utilizing the, the inventory the way you should um, and setting your reorder levels and reorder quantities, it'll automatically dump items into this report. So if you're utilizing the reorder levels and the reorder quantity, just keep in mind, this is the report that you would view to see what items need to be ordered. But again, you must have those fields set. Matrix quantity. As we added our styles matrix into the system, this is where you can view all those different quantities. Scroll down a little. We also have items by department. When you select items by department, you'll notice that certain criteria opens up in the middle of the screen here. You have the ability to select by department now. Vendor listing, if any vendors that we've added into the system, you could pull that up as well or you can also show all items that are by vendors. Current value. Current value will show you the current value of your inventory. You also have a top sellers and you also have a top 10 sellers report. If you are transferring items from store to store or from, from, uh, from in your inventory out of your inventory, these are the two reports that you would view items transfers in and out. If you need to see the specific item activity, you can also pull a report just on any specific item just by running this report here. Also, when you highlight a report, it gives you a brief description of what the report details. <clears throat> on the left here, we have a start date and start time. If you double click into either of these fields, uh, the start date will pull up a calendar and the start time will pull up a time frame. Now, if you feel that none of these reports are beneficial to you, then you can always use the advanced reporting. The advanced reporting requires an enterprise license. Advanced reporting is another service that we offer so we can create the report for you if you do not have a background with SQL or Crystal reporting. Last report I want to show you in here is your purchase order report. Let's hit display. Now the last purchase order that we did was purchase order number five and six. So let's hit display. It's gonna say enter purchase order number. So let's hit five. That was, I believe, the Snapple product that we ordered. Let's just double check, hit okay. And there you go. That is what it was. Snapple iced tea, and it's exactly how the purchase order looks when you build it when you send it over to your vendor. And again, you could also export this if need be by hitting the export button on the top left. Let's exit out of here. Next report I want to show you is going to be under sales. Under sales, your next important report is your detailed daily report. Now your detailed daily report closely resembles your end of day report. Now the only difference is that your detailed daily report does not zero your machine or settle your credit cards, which your end of day does. 
Now, the end of day is a very detailed descriptive report. It's also a very long report as well. So keep in mind, this prints to a full-size printer. But the detailed daily report can print to a receipt printer if need be. If you hit display, you'll notice that you have the ability to also sort by cashier or station. You could also enable additional options on this report as well, as opposed to the end of the day, which is the default report. It'll just include all this information. As on this report, you can decide whether you want to include it or not. Again, if you click in the start date and end date field, this pulls up a calendar. Same thing as the time. Last report I want to cover is going to be your end of day. Your end of day report is very important. It should be ran every day at the end of the day. Reason why it's called that report. Now, in the past, we've had customers call in, you know, when saying they've run their end of day and they haven't received their money. Now, we now have an option in the system when you run your end of day, it can automatically settle your credit cards for you. But to do a manual settle, all you would have to do is hit administrator number five, letter K, credit card settlement, and then hit settle. That's just an extra step. By enabling this option, if you go hit setup number four, setup screen letter G, payment processing, other options, perform batch settlement on end of day. Now by enabling this option, this automatically sells your credit cards when you run your end of day report. Now there are two places where you can go to run your end of day report. That is either on your login screen or in your manager screen. <clears throat> Let's hit update. So as I mentioned, if you hit number three, tools, letter O, end of day. Exit out of here. And let's go into our login screen. So we're going to exit out of our invoice screen. And now hit file. Once we hit file, we're going to scroll down until we see end of day. As I mentioned, the end of day and detailed daily report closely resemble each other. If usually, if you find any discrepancies on these reports, you can run both of them and find that discrepancy. So now we're going to click on end of day. We're now going to type in our password. Admin on the top. And 01 at the bottom. Our expected deposit is 2568. Let's hit OK to that. Is the amount 2568 correct? Yes, it is. At this point, it's settling my credit cards. And now it's running my end of day report. Now my end of day has printed to my full size printer. The last thing I want to show you is how to back up your database. Now, the reason why I showed you the end of day last is because the is because the end of day and backing up the database go hand in hand. So when we hit database maintenance, we're gonna hit backup database. We're now gonna type in our password, admin on the top, A-D-M-I-N, zero one at the bottom. It is strongly recommended to make a credit card settlement before backing up the database. Have you settled your credit card transactions? Well, we just enabled that option when we run our end of day, so yes, we have settled our credit card transactions. Let's hit yes to that. Now, I like to make multiple backups throughout the day. This way I know that I'm actually protected. So even though that prompt does come up, you can still hit yes and still back up the database just to override that prompt. But as, as you can see, it is recommended to have a credit card settlement and then your backup. This way we have the most recent information. It is also recommended to store your backup to a flash drive or an external hard drive or even off-site. This way, the computer that has gone down or is no longer working, you know, the, the copy of the database is not on that machine, but on your external or your flash drive. So all I'm going to do now is hit desktop because I do not have a flash drive or external connected. And I'm gonna call the backup today's date, 7-12-2013. And I'm also gonna give it a little timestamp because like I said, I like to make multiple backups throughout the day. So let's say 4 56 PM. I'm now going to hit save. It's going to take a couple seconds. And now my database is back up. And there we go. This now concludes our training on managing your inventory. 
I hope you enjoyed the training. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a great day.